Hello, I'm Willie George. I want to welcome you to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. And I hope that you'll hit that little like button down there, that little thumbs up button at the bottom of the screen. That'll help us out if you do that. And then if you haven't already, go to my website. It's myfaithroots.com and sign up there for that free email devotion that we send out every time we do one of these podcasts. We send to do 20 of them a month. So You'll have an amazing little devotional booklet at the end of each month if you do that. Our text for this series, The Lamp of the Lord, we're talking about the Holy Spirit's guidance. Proverbs 20, 27. Man's spirit is the lamp of Yahweh, lamp of the Lord, searching his deepest self. In other words, God's going to use your spirit, his spirit and your spirit, to guide you. On seven occasions in the book of Revelation, Jesus made this statement. He uttered this word. He said, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Have you ever tried to go to sleep uh, when everybody around you is being super loud? Unless you're just one of those rare people who can sleep in the middle of an earthquake. Um, you you can't. You, you're upset that, that all this noise is going on around you. But Jesus is saying something here that's not uh, in agreement with how life really works. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. What do you mean? You have to choose to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, with your natural ears, you hear with your natural ears whether you choose to or not. You can't just decide you're going to turn your natural ears off. But your spiritual ears, you have to choose to turn them on. You have to choose to let them work for you. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And by the way, uh, this is another thing. Uh, Jesus never used that expression in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he used this expression, verily, verily, I say unto you, I say, I say. He didn't say the Spirit said. He said, I say to you. But here in the book of Revelation, he is honoring the new program. In other words, it is the Holy Spirit who is communicating directly to the believer. He's the one who has touch with the believer. Jesus is removed. The Spirit is repeating what Jesus said. And so Jesus is saying, uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So Jesus is playing ball by the rules that have been established. Uh, So he has great and high regard for the established orders. And uh, he, he did a different thing when he was here on the earth. He said, verily, verily, I say to you, he was directly teaching them. But now that the Holy Spirit has been given, he's honoring the role of the Holy Spirit in speaking to the church. And so he's telling us that we have to choose to be led by the Holy Spirit. This is something we have to learn to develop and cultivate. And can I tell you, you're going to make mistakes when you try to follow the Holy Spirit. There are going to be times that you think you did the right thing and you didn't, but that's okay. Get up, dust yourself off, keep on going. That's how you learn. So on seven occasions he said this. Now, the human spirit then can hear. If Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear, that means your spirit ears can hear. Your spirit can sense or feel, but I almost hate to use the word feeling because it's it's not exactly what your spirit does. Your spirit witnesses two things. You have an inward witness, and the Holy Spirit witnesses to your spirit Yes or no, this is right or it isn't right. And it's not so much something that you get in words, it is more of a sense. I remember one time praying about uh, making a major change in ministry, and I was going to leave my position in a local church and step out and launch my own ministry. And in the beginning, I had this sense, don't do it. Well, I was a year premature in it. God was preparing me, letting me see this is what you will do. It's going to come someday, but I have this sense. Don't do it. Now, this is what happened. In those days, 
In the summertime, I got invited to do all kinds of ministry all around the country because it was the camp meeting season, and I got one opportunity after another to go do the children's ministry services in the big camp meetings around America. But in those days, it stopped when we got into the school year. So I was trying to project out how I was going to do ministry in the fall, the winter, and so forth, thinking that we would maintain the same pace because this was relatively new for me. And the Holy Spirit was telling me it's not going to be in November what it is in July. And so I had this sense, not now. And so I did not do it. I waited. And I'm so glad that I waited because that fall, things dried up. I had several uh, invitations that didn't pan out. Uh, Things fell through, and I would have been in a mess had I left my job. And so it was better that I waited. I waited a year, and then God did release me. So the human spirit, who is empowered by the Holy Spirit, is capable also of seeing. And this seeing spiritual things is really called perceiving. And uh, let me show you this in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm reading King James Version. And there they, they being Paul and Barnabas, there they preached the gospel, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up right on your feet, and he leaped and walked. Now, we read these things and we think, oh, wow, that's great. i got to tell you something. As a minister, when I read this, I think, buddy, you better know that God's in this. Because you've come there as a missionary, you're out here preaching to a group of heathen, you've told them this story about the resurrected Christ and how he was crucified for our sins and raised from the dead, and now you tell a crippled man to get up and walk, you better know you've heard from God. But Paul did. And this perceiving, the Bible says he perceived that he had faith to be healed. Now, it it could have said, the Spirit said to him, tell that man to walk, but it doesn't say that because the Spirit didn't do that. Paul saw the man's faith. How did he get faith? He was sitting there hearing Paul preach. He believed in what Paul said about Jesus, and he knew that he had faith to be healed. And so Paul said to him, sir, stand up right on your feet. And the man begins to struggle, I'm sure, in the beginning. And then boom, the power of God hits his feet, and he stands up, and he's leaping and walking. And of course, it turns the whole city on its ear. And so uh, Paul was able to perceive faith. That's amazing to me. What does faith look like? How do you see something like faith? How do you see that? There is something then in our spirit, enabled by the Holy Spirit, that enables us to see spiritual qualities. We're able to see things. I, I think sometimes you can perceive negative things, sometimes negative things in people. You'll see, don't trust that person. There's danger there. This is not a trustworthy person. You perceive those things. Paul was able to perceive or to see faith. So God enables us to see his purposes. Now, although the inward perception is similar to your imagination. It's similar to your natural imagination. You and I have imaginations. God uses them. And so uh, the perception that God gives is like that, but it's it's just deeper. It, it really is. It's deeper, and it's a hard thing for me to explain. Here's the apostle Paul. He has appealed to Caesar. He is being taken to Rome to stand trial for accusations that some of the unbelieving Jews have made against him in Jerusalem. And in order to save his life, he appealed to Caesar. But what it guaranteed was he was going to get a chance to preach the gospel to Caesar, and that's what he wanted to do. But they're going to travel in a boat, and they're traveling at the wrong time of year, traveling when storms are are common. And Acts 27, verses 9 and 10, here's what Paul said. Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and of the ship, but also of our lives. And, and, and Paul was right. They, they were shipwrecked. They lost the ship. They lost all the cargo. Now, everybody's life was spared, but the, the, the commercial the value of the ship was totally lost. And Paul could see it. He saw it ahead of time. He perceived it. He saw this. 
Now, this kind of seeing or revelation is the highest form of Holy Spirit leading. And here's why, because it provides the greatest insight. And and let me explain this. There are three primary inward ways that the Holy Spirit's going to lead you. I'm not talking about visions. I'm not talking about dreams. I'm not talking about prophecies, any of that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about the three most common forms of leading. There is the inward witness, there is an inward voice, and there is inward perception. The most common by far is the inward witness. And it is a simple yes or a simple no. And it is a sense. It's not a word. Then there is the inward voice. When the inward voice of God speaks in your heart, I can tell you it won't be lengthy. It will be a couple of sentences. Uh, It usually is very succinct. And that's what you see in the scriptures. When God spoke by his voice with people, it was very succinct. But then there are those times when God needs to get across a greater volume of information and we perceive his plan and will. And this is what I found out about it. When that happens, when that happens, I'm telling you that it takes you 30 minutes to explain what God showed you in just a microsecond. You see it in a flash but there's 30 minutes worth of natural information there. That's inward perception. You see something, and it's just it's amazing. I moved to Tulsa in 1978, was so excited about coming, and went to work for a pastor that I really admired and respected. And, and the church blew up, and it grew. But I could tell six months after, I, or six weeks after I got here, I don't fit. And I didn't gel with the pastor, and I knew it. And I knew that God had not joined us together, but I knew beyond any shadow of a doubt, God called me to this city, God brought me here, and God called me to that church, God called me to that man. I know that he did. And uh, so I was brokenhearted when I sensed this. And I took my family home from church one Sunday night after church was over, and then I went over to the campus of Old Roberts University, and I I just uh, parked out there in the parking lot by the Maybe Center. I just wanted to pray. I I don't know. I guess I thought that uh, I could be closer to God at ORU. So I'm praying out there on the parking lot, and all of a sudden, I I, I have an inward revelation, an inward perception of God's plan. And I rushed home because I I didn't want to say it without my wife hearing it. And so I told my wife when I came in the door, we got to pray. And we knelt down by our bed, and I began to prophesy, and this is what I said. I'm speaking out now what I saw, and it was thus saith the Lord. I didn't call you to one church. Your ministry will not be and cannot be fulfilled in one church. You came here thinking that you were called to one church, but I am calling you to the body of Christ, and I'm going to give you a ministry that will cover this nation, and you will reach hundreds and hundreds of churches and thousands and thousands of children And I will give you favor with pastors and leaders, and you will stand shoulder to shoulder with the leaders of this great movement. And I will give you favor to do greater things than you imagined. And sure enough, it took a little while for that to be fulfilled, but every bit of that came to pass. I perceived the will of God. I saw that. I saw that the reason that that I didn't feel like I fit. And I thought, God, what's wrong with me? I I came here thinking this would be it, but I'm not satisfied. I know something's not right. And God knew that my ministry was to be made available to the greater body of Christ at large. And so for the next couple of three years, God arranged circumstances, developed me, prepared me, and opened doors for me to go out and do that. So that's what happens when you perceive the plan of God. You see things. So we have the inward witness, we have the inward voice, and the inward perception. And by far, the one that carries the most revelation and and information is the inward perception. That's all the time I've got today, so we'll pick up here tomorrow. Don't miss it. We'll see you then.